Hey everyone, welcome to the show. This week we're taking you to Slate on Sand Lake Road. Coming to you live from the Bob Varley studio in Orlando, Florida, you're watching The Trip. This is The Trip, episode 40, for the week of November 18th, 2015. The Trip is brought to you by Dreams Unlimited Travel, experts at helping you plan the perfect vacation, whether it be theme parks on the West Coast, East Coast, or on the seas. Visit them on the web at www.dreamsunlimitedtravel.com. Hello, everyone. <laughs> Welcome to this week's very... Strange episode right. of the trip. I'm Jenny Lynn. And I'm Teresa. Back in the nook is Craig. Five yeah. days of marriage and you're falling apart over there. What's, go <laughs> what's going on? We tried to warn you, buddy. <laughs> we tried to warn you. Oh, it's just, you know, last second audio issues that okay. worked before. Are we, are we so. okay now? Oh, yeah. Everyone can hear us. That's good. They just can't hear that. So hopefully I can fix it before the issue happens. As in they can't hear our music. Da -na 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 -na. Right. There, I if gave they, it to you. That's they don't close enough. It, yeah. <laughs> That's <was laughs> pitiful. How that? many times before have we sung our own music? It's all good. What is that smell in here? <laughs> they old donuts. <laughs> <laughs> okay, anyway. I believe it's like lavender cocoa butter or something like that. Mixed with donuts. Yeah. Okay, so... <laughs> intriguing <laughs> intriguing okay sorry it might be a mixture of my perfume my hair gel and what i donut. just ate before the show the started. donut you ate mass consumed a day old donut. i'm okay. just stinky all over anyway so yeah there we go better late than never we gotta catch up i can't go out of uh, order all right we're ready to roll Oh, yeah. Cool. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody. So this week we are reviewing a new restaurant called... Is it new? S it's newer. It's new-ish. Slate. It Slate. on Trendy one word. Sand Lake Road, also known as Restaurant Row. Slate. Slate. Yes. Slate. Very much so... Right. I think it opened about three months ago. Oh, so it is relatively new. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Okay. It's pretty new. I don't feel new. so bad then because I had never heard of it before. It Not that up. I'm over there hanging out a lot, but... I hang out over there slate. quite a bit. Yeah. And we'll get into that in just a minute. Yeah, because we have an issue first. Oh, gosh, I love back on track. On. <laughs> Craig's back. I'm so glad. Okay. Our issue is, it's a group issue, right? Oh, yeah. Gang. We were all We there. were going to do a show about um, holiday shopping at the outlets. It's true. We had it all planned out. We were going to take you guys shopping for the week of Black Friday. Yeah. We thought it was apropos. It was It was a good idea. It was a great idea. So we, were we all excited met up it. and we're over there at the outlets on I drive, send, or whatever the, the heck we were, Vineland, on, Vinland, whatever the heck you want to call it. Everyone else calls it Vineland. I call it Vinland. I don't know why. I like it better, I guess. But Well, either way, it didn't work out for me. <laughs> it was just, oh my gosh. Did you? I had been there one other time, and I don't remember it being this intense. It was pretty intense. And I was a little bit, to the point I was a bit shocked about it. And... To the point that we're not doing an episode on it anymore, guys. <laughs> no, we're not because we there's nothing we can pull out of that that would other than no. me going. I can't find anything I want. This is weird. It's just hundreds and hundreds of people it's, with giant shopping bags well, it walking started around. With the parking. We didn't even park yet, and we were having issues. Yeah, though I did like that there was a parking deck. Has that always been there? You mean a parking garage? Parking garage, yeah. Um, it's been there since I first started going there five years ago, and by going there, I mean I. Don't try to go there unless I absolutely have to, but I was more than willing to to please you. Craig's no, very, yeah. Craig's right. very good at appeasing us these days. He tried, but it didn't work. <laughs> well, there was no parking in the parking garage. Like I, I, we went around and around and around, and 
And we found out why, because the place was packed with people yes. carrying around giant shopping bags of shoes and clothing and for whatever. And the strange thing is that while everyone else found everything that they could possibly want, apparently, because they all had large amounts of shopping bags, we found almost nothing. I found a phone case for myself at the Disney store. Now this, what, what was it, four ninety nine? At the Char- Disney Character Warehouse. Okay, so that was okay, but that's not Christmas shopping. That's for me. I know. The point was to go. We were going to try to get uh, stocking stuffers for our kids. <coughs> and um, I found a We. I found a T-shirt for myself. Much. Yeah. I mean, you found a few things. Tested quite a bit of shopping for ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> but the biggest disappointment was where was my my kitchen store that wasn't there anymore. <laughs> that, that I was over at that point. It's like. Screw this episode. Okay, I can't even so get into that everybody it understands, Teresa had been, you know, this whole excursion. Her mission became, I'm going to go to the kitchen store because she was under the impression that there was a kitchen store. Oh, oh, oh. It was there before <laughs> the, the hand came out. <laughs> I've been, okay, I've been there twice. Once with Pete, and then once I went back on my own to the kitchen store because I loved it so much. But it was not there. Pick yes. your own forks. We individual. walked around. I mean, it was gone. I just we walked there. around. We did the loop. I don't know. What was it? One and a half times? Or was it two full complete? One and a half times, maybe? Looking for this kitchen store. And it was not to be found. No. And, and then when the man put his hands on the back of my shirt with those little electrodes. Please. <laughs> <laughs> please tell this story. Please. You two abandoned me. I've got to go potty. And Craig's like, oh, I'll go too. So off you went, leaving me out there just waiting. And, you know, those little kiosks in the center where they're selling you just you whatever, know, whatever they're selling, they're selling you. Crap you don't need. Okay, so this guy it's walked all that, up. like, seen on television And usually stuff. I can, you know, I'm okay. Where you, They start with, where are you from? I'm from right here. Don't bother me. <laughs> right? And then he's like, no, no, what do you do for a living? Okay, well, I had some time to kill because you guys still weren't out of the bathroom yet. Next thing I know, he's got these little, look like nicotine patches. He's shoving down the back of my collar. (laughs) And he's got this little mouse in his hand, and he's, like, wired me up and, like, shooting electrodes in my back. (laughs) What the crap is this? (laughs) Next thing I know, I'm sitting down. And here comes Craig, and Craig does nothing to help me. No. You're supposed to pull me away from this stuff. You know, he stood there and watched, and to the point that when I finally came out and I saw Craig standing there and watching you engage with this man, I thought that that's because you wanted us to stay away so that you could finish whatever you were doing with this guy. I'm sorry. The people at these kiosks are nothing more than just your common gypsies. And I, I common. don't... Yeah, common gypsies. Uh <laughs> You know, the uncommon ones now are the ones with the tambourines and oh, long okay. skirts so these and are that have henna. The, the ones who work at these shopping kiosks and malls and outdoor uh, outlets, they're, uh, they're just your common gypsies. And I don't interact with gypsies. Well, oh. so he just left you. Just left me. I mean, I, I'm not going to be ugly and mean to people. He took the little electrodes off my back. And then, you know, then he come, I said, just give me the price. What, what's the price? I don't even remember what the price was. It was huge. It started out at like 120 and then like any normal gypsy, they tried to start bartering with you because they noticed that you weren't really going for it. I think you got it down to 80. 80. Yes, that that yeah. number sticks out in my mind too. Yeah. 50, I probably would have bought it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it was just a weird, weird experience. Don't touch me if you don't know me. And even then, ask first, right? Yeah. I mean, it was just bizarre. But, okay, so this is going a little bit off track, but I have a similar story about when I went to go to the mechanic's place to uh, get my car fixed. and the I, mechanic touched you? No. I don't know what, what the situation is. Both times I've been to the mechanic's place, I've had really strange things happen. The mechanic's, not, like his not house? The, people, the mechanic's place? No, no, the garage. I mean, like the garage, the... Okay. The workplace. And it's not the people that work there. It's the other people that come in. Well, this last time I came, this is going along with your electrode story and people touching you. I am sitting in my chair waiting for my car to get fixed, oil changed and all of that. And I feel my, sh- my shirt get pulled down, <laughs> like in the back. And I look over and there's this 
old man pulling my shirt down. And he and looking. Okay, that's kind of like harassment. I don't and know looking that goes down, into. Looking down my shirt. Now, granted, it was my back, so he. What was he looking for? He wanted to see my tattoo. I guess he had seen a little bit of the oh. the bit sticking out of the collar of my shirt. Okay, and how old was he? Because that would make it right or wrong for me. I think he was like sixty five or seventy. Oh, that's not old enough. He was he was older. What he was the to- tooth count? I don't. I didn't count his teeth. Next time I'll, the tooth I'll be count. on top of that. <clears throat> no, to me it's if it he's, so if he's really really old, like eighty five and up. I would think, oh, isn't that quaint? Don't touch me, old man. But if it was sixty five, yeah, I'd say get fl- your hands off me. Yeah, it was a little bit. Like and wait, sixty five is not old anyway. Let me just. Well, okay. Okay, anyway. He was older, and he pulled down my shirt to look down, and he wanted to see what my tattoo was. It was so awkward and uncomfortable to the point that the man who did work at the mechanic store, his eyes got, like, huge, big, like, saucers. And, you know, he looked like he was going to come out and and deck the man, you know. And, you know, the guy moved on soon enough or whatever and, and left. And then he was like, are you okay? But, like, it was just so strange that you know some people just have no concept of you know personal space i I, again it it, it wasn't even like he didn't even say hello to me or anything i was sitting there reading and i feel this happening on my back it was really crazy really really crazy yeah i think that's a pretty good issue body issues (laughs) (laughs) i think at the end of the day the point is unless you are from out of town and you need one i mean okay people have shopping malls regardless of where they are the these outlets never have any amazing deals they are just nice centrally located uh shopping locations with all the stores that maybe one would want to shop at to get gifts especially if you are from a different country where uh it's really coming in you're getting a killing because uh, of the currency exchange and all of that. And then I understand going here because that's what you're going to see at the Vineland outlets. A lot of uh, mass shopping. A lot of, yeah, yeah. mass shopping of uh, coach stores, really expensive sunglasses, stuff like that. And it's all, all the clothes they're buying are being wheeled around in large suitcases. So that way, all they have to do is weigh them and uh, send them right back out to <laughs> wherever they're from. And uh, so for the average person coming to shop, yeah, the Disney character uh, warehouse store is there. And although some of the stuff they sell there is quite out of date, you can get some amazing deals on uh, old merchandise that maybe you passed up on a previous trip if it's there. Uh, but it's so hit or miss in the character warehouse. Yeah. I mean, I have to say a lot of the stuff that they have there, I don't like. It's stuff that I wouldn't buy. And apparently that's why it's there because they had a big, huge surplus like that other people case? didn't buy. Well, it's right. cute for exactly you. It's like not it. my style. I, but I wouldn't have bought it at full price. No, no, not but at all. But four bucks? Okay, it gives me a little variety. You know, no, I mean, you just randomly will find really cool things there. So uh, I was on the Alaska cruise uh, with the gang back, whatever, two or three years ago now at this point. And I bought a couple things while I was on that. But now we're talking however many years it's been since. Now you'll find stuff from that same season that I was on from the Alaska cruise still there. So it's given me a chance to pick up some little odds and ends that I didn't get the first time around uh, at a much cheaper price. So like yeah. every now and then you will find that rare surprise or a and lot of times. They did have some of the Disney Infinity stuff there. I thought that was cool. But I, there were probably some of the less you know popular sets like the Lone Ranger or yeah. you know, that type of thing. Well, and a lot of Marketplace <laughs> co-op items have been popping up into there as they continually rotate right now the adventureland stuff is heavily being featured there some of the plates with mickey on them have been popping up a lot of tiki room things there i can get into that the enchanted tiki room dishware but the rest of the experience of shopping there horrendous it was except i did want it when that there was a pale pink kate spade purse that i it was a cute purse yeah i i still think of that purse but All right, anyway. we'll go back on your own. It probably won't, it'll be the, wherever the kitchen store is, and you'll never see it again. <laughs> That's at the other outlets now. It's the other outlet, yeah. So, so anyway, to sum it all up, we don't know that we can necessarily uh, recommend the premier outlet outlets on uh, Vineland Drive anyway for just you guys for casual shopping. No, don't do it for casual shopping. Yeah, if you're going to 
spend some big bucks and take a bunch of stuff home, then by all means, go, enjoy, have a good time. But you won't see me there. Yeah. All right. Well, with that, I think we are ready to get into a little bit of trip talk. Okay, we are here to talk about Slate, one of the newer restaurants on Restaurant Row. For those of you that aren't familiar, Restaurant Row is what us locals affectionately call Sand Lake Road. And the reason is because there's a whole mess of restaurants on that one street. It's... How do they all stay in business? My gosh. They And they all do. They all do. It's just like everyone, does no one stay home in that area? <laughs> no, they all, I mean, Fridays and Saturday nights, that place is packed. I know, because I used to work at one of the restaurants <clears throat> on crazy. Restaurant Row. But um, yeah, it's it's the big names too. It's, you know, Eddie V's, Rocco's Tacos, Ruth's. Ruth's Chris. Chris. Steakhouse. Um, Roy's um, Hawaiian. Mm-hmm. Is that there? I yep. haven't seen that one. And it's at Moonrise. Is, am I getting that name right? It's got a big fish sign. <laughs> oh, I know what you're talking about. I can't think of it, yeah. though. Yeah. The big fish sign store. Yeah. Well, added to the roster um, more recently is Slate, which is um, a modern... It has The menu is modern American cuisine is what they, they call it. And it's a seasonal menu. They focus on using fresh ingredients from local farmers. Mm -hmm. And, um, it's, it's pretty decent. Just moved into next door to Trader Sam's, like literally in the building attached. Joe's. Ah, Trader Joe's. Sorry. I I think it didn't sound right. Trader Sam. So Disney, like stuck in my head. Um, Trader Joe's. Sam's brother. If I say Sam again, just correct me because it's probably going to happen. Um, so it's like at the really extreme end of Restaurant Row. In fact, you, you have to almost like pass everything else in order to, to get there. It's almost at the point that it's not even on Restaurant Row anymore, yeah. except for the fact that same it road. Is. Yeah. It's kind the of same road. it's there and then it starts into apartments and houses and right. everything else. You so. kind of move past the restaurant part. But but there it is. And um yeah, we ventured out there to to check it out to see if it was any good. We were there for Sunday brunch. Yes. Craig, do we have We do? Yes. But what? Do we have a video for this? No, we have all the photos though of our okay, experience. We have no video so you're not going to get to see that otherwise I was going to say roll the tape. And yet now I won't. <laughs> Um, <laughs> they serve lunch, dinner, and then just recently they added a brunch so that you all know lunch, they do, they do something different. Most restaurants, when they stay open for a lunch and dinner, they are, they just go straight through and the staff changes. Um, Slate actually shuts down for a little bit. So lunch is Monday through Friday, 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. Dinner is Sunday through Thursday, 5 p.m. to 10 p.m. And then brunch is a Saturday and Sunday thing, and that's 10.30 a.m. to 3 p.m. Along with that, they have their happy hour, which we did not indulge in. But <clears throat> happy hours Monday through Thursday, 5 to 6.30 p.m., $4 craft beers, $6 select wines by the glass, and $6 house cocktails. And then $6 what they call small bites. Those are like their little <clears throat> smaller things that you can eat along with it. And just so I don't forget to say it, if you're – wanting more information it's slateorlando.com is their website but, let's yeah. talk about the the space itself <clears throat> i thought it was very nice open the kitchen is it's right there i mean you can see them preparing your food in the kitchen yeah the open kitchen they've got a huge wood um uh, burning stove and um look like a big still do you know what this place um reminded me of what? a pottery barn catalog Kind of, yeah. I felt like it I had that feel. A, like if Pottery Barn owned a, a, restaurant. a restaurant that specialized in wines, it would be Slate. <laughs> <laughs> it was extremely interesting to be on the inside because it did have that blend of, I, I, I don't know how to, like kind of a mixture of contemporary uh, with modern, with antiquing, all at the yeah. same time. It, it was, was a, homey. Yeah. It was a comfortable, yeah. yeah. It all really worked well together. I mean, it was, I, I would even say it was trendy. It's I it's a place where that. a lot of, you know, successful uh, people in their 30s and 40s would go. I, I, I felt... Uh, like I did not reach that level of success yet. Oh, to I was call say, right, I, I th- uh, what are you gonna say? I felt right there. I felt out of place. He came in riding in on, on my coattails. <laughs> was that what that was? 
I I felt like uh, talking about the atmosphere, like you said, it was a it was a, a a really good mix. I didn't feel out of place at all, but I didn't. But I felt I, well, it was very comfortable. Mm-hmm. Not I mean I don't mean just the seats. It was just a very comfortable environment. The people were amazing yeah. that worked there. Mm-hmm. I agree with that. Our waitress um, went above and beyond. I think. Yeah. Well, I just. Um when I when I say Pottery Barn, I think what I'm trying to say is a little bit of what Craig was saying with the, you know, it's modern and trendy, and yet there's like a touch of rustic. Mm-hmm. You know, they had this one room where it was um, shelving, and you could see where they had just stacked the wood that they would be using for the wood stove. Um, and then along with that, in the same location are, you know, their wine glasses mm-hmm. and things like that. So it's like the sophistication and yet the casual side by side. And somehow it really worked. It does. It, and it was this whole blend of like uh, natural materials used throughout the restaurant. There um, it is. Uh, but then just it, it definitely had a level of sophistication that I really liked. The parking was easy. They've got that huge parking lot, right? They do have valet parking also. <clears throat> they do. They? Well, okay, I'll uh, I'll speak on to this because I know. Um, because Slate, he knows. I, oh, I knew now because that's the Trader Joe's that I use on a regular basis. So um, while the parking lot is large, if you've ever been to a Trader Joe's before, and the parking lot isn't there solely for Slate. It's more Trader Joe's parking lot with, uh, you know, just a little bit of extra space for this restaurant. And... So it can really fill up, especially at your peak time. So uh, for a Sunday brunch, yeah, it wasn't that bad when we first went in because we first went in at 11, I believe, right, whenever it opened. JL and I did. Yeah, by the time I was there too. I was there. (laughs) Okay. At 11.05. 11.05. Okay. (laughs) Just so you say that. (laughs) But by the time we were leaving at close to 1 o'clock, they already, the lot was filling up quickly, Mm -hmm. rapidly. So they already moved into their uh, their free valet structure where because they don't have the space they offer free valet uh, you know you still need to tip them because they are doing the hard work for you you're not circling around looking for a parking lot but they do the free valet for you so that way they can uh, make sure that they're really maximizing the space they have in the small lot so uh, in terms of a weekday for dinner uh, it, it all depends on what time. If you're looking at that six to seven period, uh, that's whenever I've noticed that it's been the craziest there. And then by about eight o'clock, there's no problems parking. Well, six again, to seven's but, after work. People are yeah. stopping at the grocery store on their way home from work. And oh yeah, and especially if they have uh, not only stopping at the grocery store for that aspect too, but if they do have this happy hour and they have a lot of small plates to do it. I know. I mean, people like going out and just doing that type of thing. Yeah. It's, it's healthier than going out and having a full meal, uh, especially at a place like Slate, where the portions actually were a lot more than I expected for a farm-to-table restaurant. Yeah, I agree. Um, <clears throat> cleanliness, I think we'd all agree that it was... It was clean. It was it nice. Was spotless. <laughs> yep. Um, and kid-friendly. Now, what would you say about that? Well, there were kids there. Um, <clears throat> next table over, they seemed... <clears throat> I mean, they were well-behaved children, so I would say it was kid-friendly. I don't know. I, I would. I think I know where you're going, and that's my feeling of it. It is depends kid-friendly. on the kids. <clears throat> Excuse me. It is kid-friendly in the sense that you can bring kids there, um, and there's not an issue. But uh, for there's nothing there's nothing there that you wouldn't want to expose your children to. It's right. kid-friendly in that way. Um, but I know that if I were going to be taking my kids there. There's sometimes sometimes when I go out with my kids, you know, we're we're there, we're letting it all hang out and, you know, joking around being ourselves. If I were to take my kids to Slate, it there would be like a little bit of a pre discussion, you will be on your best behavior, you know, type thing. And they there would be this understanding that if you they know, were this smaller, is, yeah, I think I would do that. I mean small kids. I don't think I would bring a small child here. If they have have a hard time sitting down, I I don't know that I would recommend that either. Yeah, exa- I mean, you know your kids best. Uh, so I'll speak on behalf of someone like uh, Corey and Julie. Uh, they would absolutely take Ferris and Findlay somewhere like this because that's the type of restaurant that they enjoy. So they they have already conditioned their kids to you right. know be proper and respectful in this place. Uh, but 
you know, at the same time, too, I think I saw at least one or two kids that did have the iPads on the tables, and that was distracting them. So it, it's all on the level. If they need a like a play place to go and run around and go crazy, and they can't sit place. down, yeah. this isn't the place. And like I said before, I, I think the real demographic here is for uh, young adults in their late 20s, 30s, 40s who want that sophisticated hangout place. So I wouldn't shy away from bringing kids, but at the same time, uh, don't also put them in an environment where they have to be stifled and not enjoy themselves because you wanted to go to that restaurant. Well said. I'm, oh. go- I'm going to make a wonderful parent one day. I know. That wow. was kind of impressive. I was impressed by that. And when he says um, sophisticated, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm trying to think for dressing for this place. I think it, there's a range between casual and business casual. It's not like super elegant. But at the same time, I wouldn't come in flip-flops. No. I mean, we were there for brunch. So to me, it was, if that area has a church crowd, it was that kind of a casual... I mean, mm-hmm. there were people in there that were dressed up more than uh, quite a bit. Yes. So I think it is, as long as you follow the basic rules of don't come in all slobby and... Right. You know, because there were people in there in jeans. The waiters I was were wearing jeans. jeans. Yeah, I, I, was I came jeans. in in jeans and um, a nicer blouse, mm-hmm. and I was very comfortable. I didn't feel out of place at all. Craig, you were in your usual T-shirt and... No, no, no. I did wear a polo that day. So I did. A polo. I, that's true. He did wear a polo. I wore a there polo. was a collar on the shirt. I, that. <laughs> yeah, I have no. pictures of it. And that's, I, I kind of had a feeling I've never been in this restaurant, but based on whenever I see it and see the clientele going into the restaurant, I knew that, you know, I needed to be at least in dressier jeans and also wear a nice collared shirt. And uh, for brunch, I thought that was more than acceptable. Oh, yeah. And, you know, I, I could see a lot of girls wanting to go there and wear a Sunday dress and, mm-hmm. you know, just relax in there if, uh, for nighttime attire. Uh, I would definitely I wouldn't walk in there without a full length button down shirt yeah, and I think uh, would, maybe yeah, even I khakis think, yeah pull out the dockers yeah I think it would be a different that's what I was going to say nighttime would be totally different than it would for brunch or lunch yeah so. I have to agree with that and that's um, that attitude is also reflected in the service mm-hmm. we had our our server was <laughs> what were we calling her something Barbie um, she was great she was on her A game. She knew everything. She was happy to talk to us about the menu. She made suggestions, um, was very... Strong suggestions. Very strong suggestions. It was great. It was awesome. It was very obvious that she knew the menu and mm-hmm. knew how to talk to customers about it, make recommendations, and steer us away from things that she felt wouldn't suit us. Oh, yeah. She was a complete professional as far as it goes, Uh A hundred percent. She cared about the food that was being served there. And uh, something I like to do at some restaurants is go in and just ask them what they think is bad. And uh, the ones that always go, well, nothing's really that bad. That's whenever you know that they're kind of full of BS. Um, (laughs) And and she wasn't. She, She didn't say anything was flat out bad, but she then was able to say, you know what? I don't really like that one that much. It isn't People do order it and enjoy it, or this one. But she one, told us why she didn't like exactly. it. Exactly, and so you had to respect her. It. Yeah, definitely, yeah. definitely. And um, you know, she was just very put attentive. together, very well, and yeah. you know, you just was you've... back by the table a lot, which mm-hmm. was nice. And it, and it got busy when we first went in. There was, like you said, there wasn't a lot of people. But when it started to get closer to noon and after twelve, it got busier. And but she still, it, she didn't slack up. She still kept coming to the table and asking us, filling our glasses and. I mean, honestly, I can't think of any times that we've gone out to eat anywhere in, you know, when we've done our dining reviews. I can't think of any service that we've gotten better than than, no. we, did, than we got that day. I agree. She was absolutely on your on her game. I mean, that's somebody that I would give the title of, you know, career her service. Mary Ann. She had a two-part name. It was uh, Ruth, Ruth Ann. Ruth, Ruth, Ruth Ann. Ann. Ruth, Ruth Ann. 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 That's right. Yeah. That's right. Oh, we found faults in her, just not in her serving. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking, Ruthann. You don't watch. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. So, um, well, then we come to the menu. The menu, which changes all the time. So, because the menu I saw online, there were things missing and additions were brought on for the menu that we saw when we finally got right. there. Right. And like we mentioned before, there's a reason that the menu changes all the time, and mm-hmm. that's because it's a seasonal menu. And uh, 
they they try to use fresh products, you know, the highest quality from local farmers. So, and um, they even told us a story, uh, or she, Ruth Ann told us the story about how they just, uh, they literally had fried pickles on the menu, but then their farmer who gives them the pickles said that they couldn't deliver a uh, good fresh product to them. So that's why they had to switch it over to fried green tomatoes. I know. I was looking forward to the pickles, it. which we had, we had the fried green tomatoes. Yes. And it was, they were good. Yeah, they were. Oh, we're we're just jumping right into that. Let's just well, jump right. Well, in. we are. I, I guess we can give the overview. Some of the things that they, um, you know, that they serve for for dinner, anyways, appetizers, flatbreads, sandwiches, salads, and entrees. Entrees meaning like a combination of seafood, steak, that type of thing. Uh, for brunch, which is what we were at, uh, mm-hmm. you had choices of appetizers. You could, there was a a little bit of variety with pancakes, waffles flatbreads, salad sandwiches, and then uh, a slew of eggs slash entrees that you mm-hmm. could choose from. And a good selection of side orders, too, that you could get to... To complement. To complement Which your Which I meal. ended yeah. up getting one of those. Yeah. yeah. So um, we started out with a couple of appetizers, right? We had the fried green tomatoes, and we also had the smoked salmon toast. Well, we started with the fried green tomatoes, so let's... Okay. Let's fire What'd off What did y'all think that. of them? I love these. You're not fried. Now we've had these in several restaurants. We have in Teresa search gets of. the <laughs> Teresa's in search of the perfect fried green tomato that is made like hers at home. I do. I'm not familiar with fried green tomatoes. I've never eaten them before. Teresa made me eat them, <laughs> and um, eat them. some of them I have really hated. Some of them I have tolerated. This one I actually liked. Did you? I did. I know, and again, I'm not the fried green tomato queen, but this was something that I enjoyed eating. Um, I would have eaten a second one. Craig, what'd you think? Um, so this was a tough one for me because first off, they weren't uh, full size fried green tomatoes. They were uh, essentially they were a tomato cut in half and then battered, and then you know go through it's the like flour batter it again yeah, yeah they were wedges more than anything else and uh they were they were very thick and hearty and there was a lot of breading uh yeah potentially too much breading and uh well i can say potentially too much breading because whenever you dipped into the ranch dipping sauce and then took a bite uh i was still getting um some of the batter in my mouth from the actual tomato itself and so obviously that's a sign that it wasn't cooked all the way through now that's i I don't complain about something like that because uh in some instances it can be good and these these in my opinion were very good uh but they're not the best ones i've had i could give other recommendations on where to get better ones for sure well this is that might be where i fall short because i don't have a wide you don't have a a but, baseline right to- <laughs> of the ones that we have eaten at these this these so far these are the ones these okay. are the best fried green these tomatoes were, i've eaten and i agree with you of the times we've eaten fried green tomatoes together this is the top of the list but coming back from uh craig's wedding in savannah we stopped and i got picked up some green tomatoes from a roadside farmer in georgia and i had fried green tomatoes since then and i as i was cutting them and fixing them, I prepared them two different ways to see how these people are coming up with this. And I still like mine better. They need to be thinner. And it needs, yeah. I remember that from one of the other times. You you definitely had an issue with the... Thickness of it all. Yeah, yeah. the thickness yeah. of it. Like a well, it doesn't... It, it, you're getting too much batter then. You're getting... It's just like batter, 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 and then a thick piece of green tomato that is still too crunchy for me. It needs to be a little bit more cooked. So anyway... That's that. What do you think of the smoked salmon toast? That was a total surprise for me. I enjoyed it a lot. I enjoyed it a lot, too. And that was also a total surprise for me because I really don't like seafood to the point I wasn't even going to try this. Well, that was I wasn't even a, going to try it. A piece of pumpernickel toast, chopped egg, and then it had the smoked salmon, almost like a salmon salad, yeah. kind of. Um, a little bit of chopped egg, dill cream cheese, and shallots on top. I thought it was really good. It was. It wasn't too fishy. No, it wasn't. And if it had been, I wouldn't have liked it. I don't yeah. enjoy seafood um, at all. I only ate that initially because 
they came out with three of them and I felt obligated to eat, eat my part. Thing. But I ended up liking it. Yeah. It, it was good. It was a very, a very mild fish flavor. And then with all of the other things combined, it it was good. It was light. It wasn't too heavy. Oh, it, yeah. It was probably my favorite thing overall that we ate the entire time while we good. were there. Uh, it just, it's like we said three times now it's extremely light uh because of all the ingredients that went in it just all blended together so well no no one aspect of it really outshined the other the salmon the egg the the little sauce they had on top of the bread everything just blended yep. together so well uh i could have had like all of them should have in a them. row and that, and that was been better 12 dollars for that the fried green tomatoes were seven so that wasn't bad for that so um so that was our two appetizers. Drinks, you had a Bloody Mary, right? Yes. Uh, I will just be flat out honest and say I was a little hungover whenever uh, we went out to do this one. because <laughs> Hence the five minutes late. <laughs> uh, yes, hence the five minutes late. So I decided to get a Bloody Mary, uh, one of the many uh, cocktails that they have on their brunch list uh, as well as probably on any normal list. And I got mine spicy and... I will just say it actually hit the spot. Well, I don't I don't like Bloody Marys unless I do have a hangover of some sorts and so I was glad that I was able to be in a condition today to really put this one to the test. And <laughs> it, it passed, passed. with it flying for colors. Yes. Good. We had their lemonade and the lemonade was really good. It was. I wasn't going to have that either. I was going to stick with water. You were going to go with water. But I then was. you tried mine. And um, I, t- I had a little sip of yours. It was, it was so good. So I was like, oh, I'll take, bring me one of those. Me one of those. <laughs> I want one, of those, one of those, too. All righty. So let's go into what the main thing we had. JL, what was the what was your entree? You had a side, and then you had an entree also, right? Mm-hmm. I did. I had the, um, I don't remember what the name was. It was the eggs and the griddle thing. The eggs in a skillet. That's, That's right. It came it in a tiny little cast iron skillet. That's right. Skillet eggs. So it was... <clears throat> Pres- I can't say this word. Prosciutto? Prosciutto. Prosciutto. Kale, roasted grape tomatoes, marbled potatoes, and two fried eggs. And it came out looking oh so cute in that little skillet. And it was adorable. That, that you're looking at right now. And if you're wondering where all of the things that I described are, they're hiding under the eggs. Under the eggs. Yeah, so I lifted it up and, and I And it was at it. steaming hot. You Super lifted it up. It was, it was everything like, but sh- flames came out from underneath yeah. those eggs. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it was uh, really good. So the <clears throat> the kale on the side, all of that was super fresh, really good. I ate that up in a heartbeat. And <clears throat> excuse me. And everything else was really good as well. The only complaint that I would have is that I do like things with salt. And this was lacking. Salt they were just free, yeah. yeah, they were using everything with the, you know, the natural flavors and that type of stuff. And I think that that is probably uh, a better for most people in mm-hmm. general, low sodium. Um, I've got some health issues that throw me the other way, low blood blood pressure, and so like I just need salt. And um, Plus salt adds something to some things. You just it just needs a little something. It does. The, and this I felt like maybe needed a little bit of that. Um, the frustrating thing was there's no salt and pepper on the table. You have to ask for that stuff, and I think that's because they're so confident. In the meals that they are serving, they they feel like you well, know a lot of people just salt nobody's going to need without it without even tasting. You know, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I get into the habit of that. I don't see it on there, so I'm just going to put it on there to because that's the way I like it. You mm-hmm. know, and not not necessarily you don't need that all the time. You also had a side. You had the granola parfait. Let's discuss this parfait. Let's discuss what's in it first. It was coconut Greek coconut Greek yogurt and seasonal fruit. Eight bucks. This Tell was- us about it. This was the best parfait I've ever had in my lifetime. Um, And I get parfaits pretty regularly. I mean, you know that when we're traveling. Um, I like them. This parfait was so creamy. I would almost be willing to swear that the milk that they made this yogurt from came from an animal outback. Like, it was just, it was so fresh, so creamy, so good. The flavors of the fruit in it were, it was a great blend I that that parfait was my favorite thing of the it came whole with entire. A giant spoon, I remember that. <laughs> it did. I'm not sure what that was about. It came with this spoon that was like about the size spoon. of a serving spoon, yeah. but um, it was so good and satisfying. I actually probably could have just eaten that parfait for breakfast and been 
completely content and not yeah. needed anything else. It was that it good. It was good. Now, f- well, before we get there, how did you feel about the actual portion size of your entree? Because that was one of the things that Ruth Ann warned you about was that although it seemed appealing based on the description, a lot of people had complained about the actual size of it. Yeah. That it was small? She um, she had warned me that the portion size would maybe not be enough to satisfy me. I mean, when you, if you think about it, it's the, the two fried eggs in that skillet. And it's, you know, not a huge skillet. You can see it takes up, you know, it's less than half the plate. It's the size of a saucer. Plate. Right. A saucer, um, yeah. And right. then everything underneath it. Um, I could see how what she is saying maybe in terms of someone else. But well, it wasn't I was, a big hearty breakfast. No, it wasn't a hearty breakfast. In my opinion, it was an appropriate breakfast. It was, yeah. I thought that the serving size was adequate, what it should be, what a you know normal person should be eating. And for you know, thirteen dollars, that's a good. It was. It's that, a well, I decent thought that was price. a good price. The price matched the size mm-hmm. and the quality of the food. Right, and that and your parfait was eight. So I think that gave you, a, you had a well-rounded. You had the fruit. You had the dairy with the Greek yogurt. You had everything. You had the meat and you the vegetables. You had it all. And the little salad was fresh. The salads were mm-hmm. great. I had a salad on my... Okay. Craig, you had... Did you have the smoked brisket? Yes. In fact, I did have the smoked brisket that came with uh, scrambled eggs that were actually... Uh, they included pesto and one other ingredient in the egg, so it gave it a greenish appearance. Basil, pesto, eggs. Yes, and then that also came served with... Some uh, potatoes on the side, seasoned up, and uh, no, but they're for a uh, such a farm to table type place. I guess it actually makes sense. Uh, they were very proud of their meats in terms of how fresh they were, and so they had pulled pork on the menu. They had the brisket, and uh, I'm right now. I'm I love pulled pork, but I'm kind of leaning right now towards more of a brisket person this time of year i don't know why um so, so this i was had to a, try the brisket a smoked brisket with chili brown sugar and paprika home fries basil pesto eggs for 15 dollars. how'd you feel about those pesto eggs uh i actually love pesto in general and i thought it worked perfectly with the eggs normally if i eat scrambled eggs i'm the type of person that needs uh hot sauce or ketchup on them to to put it away but the pesto was a nice replacement and i don't get to eat pesto often because uh, typically it's made with nuts and so i try to stay nut free for kylie um so the eggs i i absolutely love them i could understand why it would be off-putting to some people based on the color green eggs it's hard to jump over that mentally yeah but overall it was absolutely delicious uh the potatoes were bland to say the most uh again uh, breakfast potatoes are really varying. If they're very greasy for me, then that's obviously whenever they're the best. However, these ones were, uh, they were baked very well, uh, roasted really well. And so I needed hot sauce for them. But that was actually kind of pleasant because then I got to try their hot sauce that they make in-house there. They don't they don't give you a bottle of Tabasco or Red Hot or anything like that. They actually make a uh, almost like a ketchup consistency style hot sauce, and uh, it was it was very very good. I didn't ask about their ketchup if it was bottled or made in-house, but I'm almost 100% sure that it had to be made in-house. And then for the brisket itself, uh, it was not the portion size I was expecting. She kind of Ruthann described it to be uh this massive thing that I would uh I would need to take home a little bit extra just because how much was there. Uh and it, it was definitely good for one serving, but because of her initial saying, I, I was expecting a lot more and then also in terms of the brisket, uh, you know, this was definitely the fatty on the fatty end of brisket. This wasn't lean brisket, so uh, I was trying to save a couple uh, extra pounds there, so I knew I fit into my suit for the wedding. So <laughs> I wasn't actually eating all the gristle and part of that that makes that portion of the brisket so delicious. So that's almost a shame on me uh, style that I didn't enjoy it to its fullest extent. Uh, but the brisket was actually, frankly, some of the best brisket I've ever had. Uh, up until I got to have my wedding brisket that was made specifically <laughs> only for the bridal party. Traditional wedding brisket? Well, you know, because I didn't want a groom's yeah. cake. I, I like some dessert, but it has to be the right one. Couldn't couldn't really think of anything. So uh, whenever our was. barbecue person said, well, you know, I can also make brisket, I thought, oh, a groom's well, brisket. All right. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> and I just finished the last piece of that yesterday, sadly. <laughs> oh, my. But uh, one of the also coolest things of my meal was that it wasn't served on a normal plate. It was served on a piece of wood that you can kind of see in the picture. It was like the like, round, like, like a trunk tree. of a tree. Yeah. A trunk of a tree, uh, yeah. Like a slice from a trunk of a so, tree. So A plus on them for that unique plating style there. Yeah, I, I that appreciated was cool. the effort. So overall, I would get this again, but I would probably explore a couple other things on the menu first, like the the peach uh, pulled pork that was on there and maybe some other stuff like that. That looked good. Yeah. Now, I we'll go over some other menu items here in a minute, but I had the Benedict Arnold. I do love Eggs Benedict. Um, this came with uh, crab cakes, poached eggs on a ciabatta with hollandaise sauce. Those are the most perfect poached eggs I have ever seen. <laughs> They almost look fake, like whipped cream or something. Right? They're, they were just like perfectly round. Now, for me, I love this, but it it needed more hollandaise sauce okay. because I do love, I want it to taste, you, you couldn't taste it in every bite because there wasn't enough of it. It was good. Having a little light salad next to it made it really good too. Crab cakes were really good. Um, it, was, it was a nice alternative to um, Eggs Benedict with the crab in there and all so some of the other items that are on the menu were, and this is the brunch menu. this is the brunch menu different it menus changes for... but it'll give you a little idea of what they have uh, smoked chicken pizza um belgian waffles seared tuna um mushroom toast mm. fried chicken or waffle sandwich they had a grilled cheese with a pork belly belchamay bacon that sounds really good. I didn't see that on the menu. I guess this is the menu we had, right? <laughs> Some of their sides, besides the granola parfait, um, plantation grits, bacon, French toast sticks, two eggs anyway for eight bucks, um, like a side of the paprika home fries, a biscuit bomb, which I had to ask about because, I don't know, I had pictured it with um, gravy. Uh, sausage gravy, but it was just a biscuit stuffed into buttermilk, a sausage stuffed into a buttermilk biscuit with some cheddar cheese. Um, Ruth Ann said it was a bit dry. Well, yeah, and that's whenever we even questioned her on, well, why wouldn't you serve it with a nice white gravy? Yeah. But anyway, then they Ruth had a pecan Ann. pecan sticky bun, which I didn't see, but that sounded good too. It was only four bucks. Shrimp and grits. Um, so they had a nice choice, a lot of different things to choose from. And I didn't think anything was overpriced. No, I mean, not for that for where level we were, of restaurant. Right, right. For, right, exactly. And, and again, considering the quality of the ingredients. I mean, and for the two of us. Of service and. For the two of us, um, with tip, I think it came out to like $85 for brunch. Yeah, and again, that's with us getting appetizers, entrees, mm -hmm. drinks. And, and I got dessert yeah. oh that's right we i was dessert. the only one who got dessert no we had, no no no, no, we no. We did, had a, am i forgetting what did you have we had ice cream oh that's right that's why i didn't count that you didn't um, count that yeah you guys got ice cream they had a number of different flavors didn't they pineapple sage sorbet malt maple malt ice cream and pistachio craig had the maple malt which he sucked off the plate like there was no tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, mine was, I think this was mine, the maple malt. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. yours. Um, this, uh, oops. That's that pistachio. Looks ugly on there. That was the pistachio. Did yours have little nuts on it? Uh, I couldn't, but the thing, okay, here's the problem. I thought that was mine, but then I'm looking in the picture, and uh, that that's looks, yours. That looks green to me. Like That pistachios. does look green to me. I think that one's the best Maybe that was just lighting. Okay, either way, we had either ice cream. Either way, they were both um, good. Yeah, no, my uh, maple malt, maple ice cream, you can't go wrong with anything maple. The only thing, the only way they could have made this any better was by adding even more crushed up malts in there, as well as uh, just a drizzle of maple syrup all Maybe over Maybe a that. side of bacon oh. would have been really no, good. No, I, I said that, that. if Not even a side of bacon, but if they'd also, you know, chop up some fresh bacon, put Crumble, it in the mix yeah, in that there, been it, good. it could I have been perfect. Bacon and ice cream. What dessert did you, did you have the dark chocolate beet cake? Had the, she had the trifle because yeah. we were making lots of friends jokes. Oh, that's friends. right. Yeah. I had the dark forest trifle. Rich chocolate cream. With meat. Almond no, layer cake. Beef. Layer of beef. Yeah. Peas. It, this was sans beef. 
<laughs> Apparently, the cookbook pages were not stuck together for this chef. Um, yeah, rich chocolate cream, almond cake, dark cherry preserve. I couldn't pass that up. I love almond flavored things and cherries are my jam as well as chocolate. But the thing with chocolate is I, I love chocolate, but I don't like dense, heavy chocolate. Like on the occasion I can, I can get into that, but if something's too dense or too heavy chocolate wise, then I'm, you know, kind of, I, yeah, I'm kind of over it. But this, um, when it says cream, it was a very light, like a, a whipped cream, like a mousse. And that along with it had these little um, square chunks of the almond cake, little cubed uh, almond cake in it. And then, you know, the cherry preserves, the flavors blended perfectly. And much like the parfait, I just scooped every single bit out of this cup. It must have been good because you didn't offer to share in any way. I was not going to share with you. (laughs) <laughs> there was, it was too this was it was too good it was really really good I was pleased and you know and then after after all of that uh with our meals like I still I mean I was I was full I had certainly eaten enough but I wasn't um I didn't feel heavy it was does that like, make a sense I need to unbutton sense? my pants kind of a yeah meal, right? no no I felt full I just I didn't feel weighed down I didn't feel heavy. no I didn't either and it, and that's a good feeling like yeah, you said I felt because we had a full day feeling. ahead of us and mm-hmm. I and usually after a big meal you just want to crawl in a hole and, and sleep. sleep take a nap take yep. a nap but no this was it was enough light with everything that we had that it it uh, kept it light and airy and mm-hmm. good and um, for those that are wondering about special dietary accommodations, they did have a um, couple things on the menu that could work for vegetarians. But the way that their level of service was and how everything is made to order, there would be no problem whatsoever with you know asking for you know special dietary requests. I have every confidence that they would accommodate that, especially oh, yeah. if you end up getting a server like we had she was on the ball and knew everything about everything so um i think that's kind of it other than you know i had to make my regular bathroom stop (laughs) these bathrooms were awesome i actually went to the bathroom here too i went to the bathroom this time (laughs) for necessary reasons not just to look at the decor no the bathroom was nice it was i liked the fact that it was a single you had it to yourself. Yeah, the, it was. It wasn't stalls. It was a door, and you went into your own room. You didn't go into a room that had a row of of stalls. stalls yeah. It so was like its that. own room with its own door and its own sink, and you could have a little mini party in there, I guess, if you wanted. I don't know, but it was just <laughs> okay. <laughs> I know it's a weird thing to say. Sorry. <laughs> um, I, I, it was again very clean, very impressive. So. Yeah. It was cool. And as far as uh, accessibility to the attractions, this one's not as close. We're, you're not on iDrive for this, so it's not walking distance from anything. You're going to have to get in your car and drive if you're making a day of it. However, it's not a far drive. Uh, Sand Lake Road runs perpendicular to International Drive, and it's so it's just a straight shot you know, to there, and then you have access to all of the attractions that are on iDrive. I think well worth it. And the fact that it's right next door to Craig's grocery store. Trader Joe's. Trader, Trader Joe's. Joe's. Where you can pick some stuff up and go back to for your hotel too. I think. And in fact Craig did that. Yes. Uh, yes. Did you get them and were they good? Uh I actually still haven't opened them yet. They've obviously moved from uh their pumpkin craziness into now their Thanksgiving craziness. And so one of the new menu uh not new menu, one of the new additions they have to their long list of everything that they offer in their grocery store is uh, turkey-flavored Thanksgiving chips, uh, which potato chips, which I cannot wait to dive into. Uh, They also had a uh, a turkey gingerbread that you could make. Why cook the meal? Just buy this and serve it to (laughs) the mother-in-law. I think that's how Craig sees it. (laughs) That's exactly how I see it. And I I really wanted the turkey gingerbread, (laughs) but... Uh, Kylie and I tried to make our first gingerbread house ever for uh, for Halloween of the Trader Joe's kit, and I cannot stand behind their product there. It is not a good gingerbread house. It didn't really? have the, the stick, the appeal. Yes, yeah, some things sold at a bargain just aren't that good. No. So, But overall, Trader Joe's, shop at it. 
Well, and the other thing that's right next to Slate, and I think we have a picture of this. They have this very serene pond with fountains and like a pathway that goes around it and little benches spaced at different areas. And again, it's it's not um, secluded by any... Um, but it's a nice little oasis, a nice it's little It's a nice natural. little sitting area, yeah. you know, and in my mind, I, you know, just kind of think that you can make a little date of this thing. Like if you were to make the drive out to mm. Slate and you have a pleasant, you know, evening uh, dinner with whoever you're with, and then after it's done, you can walk out to this beautiful area with fountains and little pathways, lots of flowers, sit there for a bit and, you know... Um, chat, whatever, until you're ready to go. Then you hit Trader Joe's, grab some snacks for your hotel room, and off you go. And it's been a nice little excursion, you know? Yeah, this is definitely one of those little parks where you could expect an old person to be sitting there wanting to feed the ducks, but the ducks just aren't there. (laughs) No, they're not. (laughs) Well, and the reason for this is, I know that in the picture it looks... It looks very serene, and it is serene, but it's not secluded. It's actually right next to the parking it's lot. It's sitting so, right on the highway, the road there in the parking lot. Yeah, you look else. in one direction, it's the pretty little pond, and you look in the other direction, it's like, you know, rows and rows of cars. But um, nevertheless, it is there, and I actually have, because I go to Trader Joe's as well. I live in that area. Um, I actually have sat out by that pond, you know, for a just chilling in, in afternoons yeah because it's very very peaceful feeding the ducks you know yeah feed the birds <laughs> i'm the old bird woman so um <laughs> <laughs> well all right i on the other hand don't live near there and i'm not going to drive over there and feed their ducks when i got ducks near my house to feed so okay ducks and feral cats and yes we've got our own little <laughs> group of animals and wildlife so yeah. anyway all right so you know Overall opinions, wrapping it up. Craig? Oh, whenever I feel uh, more successful in my life, I will definitely return to Slate. <laughs> but like I said, I have not reached that level of success yet that I can Take fully... Take over there. Uh, no, she has definitely also not reached that level of success. She's actually gone downhill oh my by gosh. marrying me. <laughs> well, <laughs> that is true. So now we got to both She did step up. down yes. there to... Yeah. All right, he'll be working on that, I guess. But it's so goals. Oh, I, I, goals I will, are good. I will absolutely be back at Slate at some point in the future, uh, for sure. It was just too fresh, too good, uh, and just a really a relaxing type of restaurant that I could see myself going there on many date nights in yeah. the future mm-hmm. or date brunches for whenever you do something to piss her off the night before. See, he's already got a plan. Golly, he's, he's already been got married a plan. five days and he's, he's already, already got the he's got I pissed it. her off plan. That didn't come in for. Two years into my marriage. <laughs> there was no plan. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, anyway, what about you, Tess? I would go back, definitely. And mm-hmm. I think I would go back and take my husband, not because I need to smooth anything over, but I think he would like it. I think he would like the atmosphere. I think he would like the dinner menu. We didn't even talk about that. I mean, there is steak, fish, chicken. It's a wide range of choices. And I think there's something on here for everybody. And I love the atmosphere. And I think I think it's a perfect date. date. I do, too. Um, and I don't know how you all feel about it, whether, like, say you were here vacationing, you're at Disney or visiting Universal, if this is a restaurant that you would go out of the way for and take maybe an evening off of your vacation, do you think it's that level or not quite that level? Uh, I would absolutely say that right away just because – it's not theme park food, and as much as I know there is good theme park food, uh, this is just better. Mm-hmm. Did it's you 100% read the, better. Did mm-hmm. you look at the dinner menu? Uh, Pumpkin hummus. <sighs> <laughs> oh, my yeah. gosh, really? Deviled eggs, pimento cheese, hush puppies. I love a good deviled egg. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. I think I agree with you in my mind if I was here on vacation. I think that this one would actually be worth taking an evening out Mm -hmm. and doing a date night here. When I would go on my vacations, um, my husband and I would always specifically set aside a date night just for us. I think this is actually a more affordable way to do it than even eating at some of the resort restaurants. Oh, yeah, to match the quality at uh, Disney or Universal with what you're getting at Slate, it would cost 
way more. Mm -hmm. Uh, Absolutely, 100%. And uh, on top of that, too, as far as I'm uh, to know, Slate is its only restaurant right now. There, there is on, there is one and only Slate. And yeah. I like places like that where yeah. you can't get this anywhere else except right. this one place. So while it's still unique, I would definitely try it out. Because with how successful this place is so far and will be, uh, I have a feeling they're going to start becoming a bigger, at least Orlando-based chain for now. And we'll see where it goes in the future. Well, look at this. Um, so what the story is, is there's not going to be another slate, but the restaurant, the company that owns the restaurant, um, they do have another, they have another new restaurant, a new concept oh. that's going to be coming out very soon. Uh, a different called, chef, different. Yeah. yeah it's, uh, it'll be called Som, S-O-M-M. And okay. it's going to be um, wine. Sommelier. Som- Somalia. I, okay. I'm assuming that's yeah. where it comes from because it's going to be wine based. It's oh. going to be a wine based restaurant. That would be good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Going back to Slate, though, Rockefeller mac and cheese. <laughs> Calling S- your name. Spinach, bacon, cheddar cheese, and oyster crackers. Clams Casino. I'm telling you, bring it on. <laughs> Roasted beets, Brussels sprouts. That's a trendy vegetable now. I do love my Brussels sprouts. I might have to go back by myself. I was going to say, it sounds like we may need to make another trip back for dinner time. Yeah. All right. Well, I think that's going to do that for uh, this week's show. We're going to hope that you, we are going to, not we are going to, we actually do hope that you will join (laughs) us again next week for another episode of the trip. I'm tripping over myself. You are. Because we are not having a show next week. I didn't know where you were going with that. Next week's the jolly holiday of Thanksgiving. (laughs) Oh, 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 wrong one. Wrong one. Sorry. One holiday at a time. So I hope you all have a, an amazing Thanksgiving. Bef- and Well, wait. Before we let you go, though. What? Uh, the next episode. Do you remember our next episode coming up or in a couple weeks? And we have an episode coming up where we're going to be talking about your worst, most horrific travel disaster stories. Bring them on. We want to know. That's right. So we want to hear about the worst trip stories you have holiday make it holiday trips right because it was a holiday show well i would i would say holidays preferable holiday travel yeah yeah holiday travel well, it involves the family the and grandma exactly that's how most trips go bad because you have too much family involvement yeah so that's what i want to hear about the holiday travel yeah we want to hear it so we want what you happened? to write to us you who'd can... you bury in the backyard <laughs> You can send those stories to Jenny Lynn at WDWinfo.com and uh, we'll see what we get. Maybe your story will be one of the ones that we tell on that episode. Yeah, you we can put them on Facebook too if you'd like, right? You could. And while we are on that subject, we probably should, we don't say this too often, make sure that you guys are following us on Facebook, Twitter, and now Periscope. Because we have a Periscope account. So um, for all of those, it is Diz, D-I-S, The Trip. Twitter, Facebook, and Periscope. And you're going to want to do that. Because we actually... And Instagram. We have an Instagram, too. I forgot Instagram. Instagram, too. It's all the same. Diz, The Trip. And um, there's lots of places to follow us. Periscope. We just broke in our Periscope account. and um, Broke into it. We did. Um, when Tess and I made our road trip out to Craig's wedding... We uh, up to Craig's wedding, yeah. Out to well, because it was Georgia. That's up north. You said out. I said up. Whatevs. Anyway, we uh, yes. we periscoped a couple of our uh, road trip singalongs. So yeah, it was occasionally scary. we'll be doing fun stuff like that. If it's something you think you'd want to see, make sure you follow us so you can get your notifications when we're being wild and crazy. Silly. Exactly. So can we say goodbye now? Uh, yes, we can say goodbye now. Happy Thanksgiving. Trip out.